Hey folks, welcome back to After Work Gaming. We are back in Mist 2021, and we are going to read about Channelwood, which is where we are headed right after this. Let's just go all the way back to the beginning here, right? Because we just sort of leaf through this. I've called the AIDS Channelwood, and it is a very different world. Though it is exactly how I imagined it, it is still amazing to see it with my own eyes. Water covers this age as far as I can see except for a small rocky island. Elsewhere there are only trees which grow directly out of the water. A myriad of thin wooden passages are passageways are built just above the water and disappear into the forest. I assume they were built by some time ago, built some time ago, for they appear aged. I am eager to discover more about this land and its people, but I have arrived here late and I must rest. I was awakened this morning by strange noises coming from a pathway adjacent to the one on which I had slept. I saw a group of monkey-like people heading in my direction. They had not seen me yet. I did not feel threatened by their presence. Their response to me was one that I would have never expected. After staring at me for a short time, they fell to their knees and began what appeared to be some sort of ceremonial worship. I tried to speak to them, but they did not understand my language. Instead, they indicated through enthusiastic hand motions that I was to follow them. As we walked, I began to notice that the waters below us were changing colors. Slowly, subtly, they would change from deep blue to muddy orange, then from muddy orange to beautifully clear. I was so intrigued by the water, I hardly noticed that we had arrived at a ladder. Climbing the ladder led us to the, their village, which is about 10 meters above the water and can only be reached by rope ladders that stretch from the lower paths to the village level approximately halfway up the grand trees. It is very interesting watching these people carry out their daily tasks. Even after watching them for hours, I did not understand exactly what they were doing. At sunset, they motioned for me to follow them. I followed the creatures to the doorway of an enormous hut. Strangely, once inside, I found that the hut appeared even larger than it had from the outside. The walls were garnished with bright metals, and in the center of the hut sat the leader of these people. At least he appeared to be their leader, for he sat a meter off the floor in a thick throne. Guards surrounded the strong creature who was dressed in many exotic, colorful fabrics. Next to the leader sat a very old human. At least to some extent, he appears human. His hair which was only on his face and head, was completely gray, almost white, and hung very long around his frail body. His thin head hung limply by an almost grotesque neck that could not hold its head up to look at me. But what a surprise! This creature could speak my language. Shortly thereafter, I was given a bed with some hand, mo uh, with some hand motions that looked to be telling me to go to sleep. I look forward to learning more. As I suspected, the ancient creature is a human, but he is old beyond his own reckoning and seems almost insane. However, the tree dwellers almost revere him as a god. They are treating me now in the same fashion, which makes me feel very uncomfortable. It is almost impossible to understand this old man. His voice is feeble but wild. He has adopted much of the language of the tree dwellers. He himself told me he had not spoken our tongue in ages. He attempted to explain to me the history of this place. The following is my best translation of what he has told me. Many years ago, the humans and tree dwellers lived together in this place, which was then a vast island. They interacted very little. The humans dwelt on the ground, and the tree dwellers lived high above the humans. Occasionally, the island was disturbed by mysterious rumblings, which happened randomly. Some sort of tectonic or volcanic actions, I suspect. The sometimes slight, sometimes heavy tremors would only last a short time, then they would stop, allowing everything to return to normal. One day, things changed. The rumbling began and grew quickly to unprecedented levels. Soon, it became apparent that the entire island was sinking slowly into the ocean around them. Many of the humans died that day, but not before sacrificing themselves in order to stop the sinking of the island. The humans who lived through this catastrophe moved into the trees where they gradually died out, maybe because they were unequipped for such an environment, but I'm not sure. This is the story the old man communicated to me, although many details are very unclear in my mind. I am especially confused as to how the humans saved the island from completely sinking. In fact, I doubt the accuracy of that part of the story. The island must have stopped on its own, yet 
The old man believes in the truth of the story as if he had been there, and the tree dwellers worship him, and apparently all humans, as if they were heroes or gods. Oh, as if he were heroes. Interesting. The old man ended our conversation today with an event which I will never forget. He began gripping my hand tightly, murmuring something about rest and asleep. He then said, we had expected you to come sooner. These actions filled me with a sort of immediate dread. With much effort, he stood to his feet. I tried to help, but he pushed me away with more force than I imagined his frail body contained. The tree dwellers quietly surrounded him with very solemn faces. They then kneeled before him. He walked to each and placed his hand on their heads. All the while, he murmured words which I did not understand. Finally, he turned to me and smiled. Then he closed his eyes and walked out the door and off of the narrow path high in the trees. The tree dwellers were silent. They began a procession down the nearest rope ladder. As I was descending, I saw several of them pick up the body he had fallen onto a lower level of walkway and carry it away. He was laying down at the dead end of a short pier-like structure. With the use of some potion, one of the tree creatures uh, lit the pier on fire, and I watched as the flames engulfed him. As this strange funeral proceeded, the waters around the pier changed to dull green. This morning, I awoke finding it hard to even believe the previous evening's events. The water is a dull green for as far as I can see now. For some reason, the water no longer shifts color. As I wander throughout the pathways, the creatures watch me, curious to see what I will do next. They are constantly offering me strange objects of affection. I even found food outside the doorway to the room in which I had slept. This is a unique race of beings. I hope to learn their language soon so that I may learn more from them. Uh, interesting. New ink color. I have lived on this world for three months off and on, and the tree dwellers have shown great hospitality. I am even beginning to learn bits of their language. I've decided to return home for an extended stay with my loving wife and my sons. Okay, so it's Atris. And hopefully return with them. However, I'm sure Catherine will once again refuse. I think this age would be a wonderful experience for them all, and I at least look forward to how Cirrus and Achenar will react to its curious inhabitants. More time passes, New Ink. Catherine is staying behind, as expected. My sons have returned with me, and they enjoy this age very much. They get along very well with the tree dwellers and are picking up their language surprisingly fast. I have no doubt that it will not be too long until they can speak with the tree dwellers much better than myself. More time, new color. I am leaving tomorrow to check on Osm Osmoyan age. Cirrus has suggested that I allow him and his brother to stay. Though the idea unsettles me, I know the boys are growing up rapidly. The hospitality of these creatures is such that I could think of no better place to leave them alone for a short while, so I will consent to their request. I warn the boys not to take advantage of the respect the tree dwellers have for their ideas. They seem to understand my warning, and I have faith they will follow it. <laughs> Next entry. Much to my dismay upon arriving in Everdunes, I learn that Pran and her people are continuing to be menaced by the Coptic. I fear for their survival and plan on returning to her shortly after checking on Cirrus and Akinar here. See Everdoon's journal for more information. After watching Cirrus and Akinar, I see they are handling things very well, and I think I can put to rest any fears about leaving them in Channelwood again, and for a little longer time. Next entry. The tree dwellers seem slightly distressed that I am leaving, but are happy that Cirrus and Akinar are staying behind. Next entry. New ink color. I have been gone for over three days and have been to many different places. I had to tell Cirrus and Akinar got about Pran's death today, and they were visibly shaken, although they only remembered her from their childhood. Catherine has suggested that it would be wise for Cirrus and Akinar to leave Channelwood for a while, and I have to agree. They will be returning with me when I leave again. Next entry. I have told my sons that they will be returning with me in two days. They spent the entire night telling me of an adventure they experienced in my absence, and it was rather remarkable. It seems they constructed a boat with the creatures and traveled some ways out into the surrounding waters. I enjoyed hearing them talk excitedly of their adventures, and am reminded of my own adventures as a child. Next entry. I finally understand why the tree dwellers have been giving me their many inks and insisting I write with them. Looking through some of my past entries, I see now that the inks have changed from the black I thought they were to various different colors. 
I have shown some of the creatures my journal, and they laughed and howled. I did not know they had such a sense of humor. Even now, as I look through this very colorful journal, I cannot help but laugh myself. Okay. Next color. New entry. We will be returning tomorrow, so my sons are with the creatures for the last night here. They have told me they would like to come to Channelwood again and also asked if they can visit some other ages alone. Though I will have to think over their requests, I believe they have proven to me that they are trustworthy and responsible. Catherine will also have to help me decide whether they are ready for travel alone, or uh, for now I must give my farewells to the creatures, for I do not know how long it will be until I visit this age again. Okay. Your bridges. This looks like a layout. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just copying it down. Roughly. Okay, it's like a staircase. Okay. So there is a lot of lore going on in those books, but, you know, that's fine. Again, it's point and click. It's an older game where... You know, your interaction was interaction. You would you would read, you would learn about the world. Okay, we gotta put the tree down. Right? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, and then let's go to Channelwood and see this. I mean, really, it should be like a watery world, I suppose. And we'll see what it looks like. And then, I mean, I'm guessing there's what? There's red and blue pages, but there should also be, I think there's, I mean, there should be other things, right? Because Atreus basically said he hid the books in the places of protection, so. Okay, let's go to Channelwood. Water is green. And it is very swampy. Nice. Oh, I would have bet, based on the diagram we found, that they that they had or that we would have ended up on like the, the place with the staircase. No? No? Okay. All right, let's do this. We ended it. We started there. Let's just follow this real quick. Ew. Yeah, let's put it back. Okay. This is all. Okay. This is all just bridges going to the same place. I'm seeing a windmill. That's our. That is our first actual landmark. Okay. All right, let's see what we can find out. Again, we're not going to necessarily start messing with all those... I mean, I think every junction has one of those levers. We're not going to mess with them until we know what we're looking at here. So we're filling up with water. There's really nothing else except that. Alright, we can't stop it. It's so right, sorry. So this thing pumps water up. Water goes in here, and I'm assuming we can. This, the levers redirect the water around this network, right? Frog. Frog. Uh, okay. So let's just go over here real quick. So if we follow all the way out to here... That goes back in the water. If we follow all the way out to here... Um... Uh, looks like a this looks like a pump too actually we're not going to do anything with that yet 
Okay, if we go all the way... No, come here. If we go all the way out to here, that looks like a dead end. Which goes back in the water if we go all the way to these places. Okay, we have an elevator. Do. Ah, we can't because... I see. Okay, so this is water water powered. Cool. No, but we can extend from that side, okay. We can connect up that half of the pipe network. Alright, so there's the windmill. And now let's see the other half of the junction. Okay, we'll go over here. Okay. Is this not a thing? No, this is a door, but the door I am petting. Actually, I don't know. Can the door open from this side? Let's see. Let's let's turn on the water, right? Okay. So yeah, now that we've seen, then I'm assuming the water powers everything. Okay. Alright, so now we're hearing the water running. We're flowing through the pipes. Right, okay, so the water's flowing here. No, it's not open. Okay, so, but... I got an idea. Hold on. Okay, so the red shows where it's blocked off, right? So if we don't want to go there, we however do want to go here, redirect, okay, Re redirect, yeah. Okay, the water goes here, the water goes here, because there was, remember there's this dynamo here, so I'm curious. Hey! Nice, huh? And my only point is, it looks like... Yeah, okay, I'm seeing stuff up there. But it looks like there's no, like, handle on that door over there, right? There's another, dyna there's another dynamo with no handle. Okay, so let's just walk around here. We've left the water system behind. Elevator. Is this the elevator or is there another elevator? Let's see. I'm guessing. Oh no. Here we go. This is to extend the pipe. Cool. Okay. Let's redirect the water. You want to redirect to this elevator or the other? Let's redirect. Just start on this side, right? Let's just let's just go through because it... okay, we're here. Now we're going to. Now it doesn't matter here because we flip here. And we flip here, right? Because there's the other elevator. But let's go to the. Actually, no. Even better. Let's go here. This is the 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 original elevator we found. No? Okay, no problem. We'll flip it over. This isn't quite... I will say, this is not exactly what was described in the journal, right? There's not, like, rope ladders and... Definitely no monkey-like people. We'll see. Okay, so that explains why we need this little bridge, because this little bridge takes us over to the elevator, and there's no actual 
path to get there other than this one, right? Because the pipe just goes over open space. It goes here. Yeah, there's no path. All right, so let's go ahead. Oh. Right. Door. That's probably the reason that that other one didn't work. That's fine. That's fine. That's on me. I'm assuming... I'm assuming I'm wrong. This is just like straight out to go back, right? Yeah, that's how to go back to mist. Okay, no. We are, um... Let's go, let's go redirect to the elevator. Sorry. Okay, so this is the path home. Good to know, but that's probably... That's to access the main one I gotta go to, to repower the other uh, elevator. Cool. Fine. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. We'll run along this path. And then we will explore rest of this world i well so all of this begs to begs the question right so atris leaves the messages we don't know how long it's been clearly if his explanation or his instruction to his his wife right to, to whoops nope didn't mean that sorry to catherine i'm assuming it's his wife right because he has sons with her and lock that off. So we go here. But if he leaves a message and says, hey, you have to delete this, and it's not deleted, which means Catherine hasn't read it. Okay. So then the question is, how long has it been since the journals were written, since any of the stuff described in it happened? Because a lot of the books in that library are just crumbled away. And even, even the ones that we read are pretty grimy. Possible. It's been, you know, years and years. Okay, that elevator is there. I see. Maybe? Maybe not. I think that might be just a little, like, gondola right there. Okay. Go ahead and check out this area. And once we've checked it out, I think maybe we'll call it there. Uh, reading took a little longer than I expected, but that's fine. Okay, again, the elevator. Dead end number one. Let's go see what we can find over here. Bowl of some kind. It's a thing of some kind. Okay. Alright. Don't. I don't see anything, but that doesn't mean there isn't anything here. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Let's go take a look at the hut. Other than, you know, that place is in somewhat of a disarray. <laughs> Ditto here, although this is more deliberately stacked. Okay. Okay, let's go take a look. More pots. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, that has more branches. That's where we came from. Okay, let's go here first. Yes. Okay, this is the place with the gondola, right? That one. Oh, hello. Did it open the door down there? No. No, okay, but let's open the door. Perfect. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's an elevator. Maybe the, the gondola that I'm seeing is just the cord to open that door. Okay. Okay, so we open the door. Now we go 
back to the hut. And we continue on to the next, ch like, not checkpoint, the next locus, I guess. Hello? the hut. The other hut. Not quite gonna go there yet. Alright, let's go here, because that other one has more branches, I feel like. Although, it looks like that this area connects back up there. And this place is kind of a mess. Okay. We're not gonna continue here. We're gonna go the other way first. Let's just get a sense of where we are here. Kind of like put together a bit of a mental map, right? Okay. More pots, some more sitting area. All right, this is the loop. Pots. Pots. Pots, a lot of pots. Okay. Right, this is the one that we had come in on, right? Right, okay, cool. Anything here? Yeah, that's the way to get to the staircase area. Okay, it's the hanging... It's the hanging basket area. Let's go here. Let's continue on here to this dead end. Anything? No, it's just another basket. That's yeah, a lot of pots and urns. Let's run the loop just one more time, just to again familiarize ourselves. Okay, this goes here, we go around. This connects up to where we had come from with the hanging bowl, and now let's go here. Okay. Okay. Oh, there's a whole second floor. Let's see, can I open up the door down there? Just I want to... Sorry to anybody who's getting dizzy, because I am getting dizzy. I cannot imagine doing this uh, in VR. Okay, so this is the first floor. Quote-unquote, right? You know what? I have a thought. Remember, the journal said that humans were below, and then... Uh, sort of the tree dwellers lived above, right? Well, what if... No, 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 no. Keep making the same mistake. No. Ah, ah, okay, hold on. Let's redirect the water. Right, so the journal said that the tree dwellers lived... Um, you know, some ways up the trees. What if the waters receded? Right? And now what we're going to do... Flip the water, and now we can go back up the staircase. Perfect. What if the waters receded a little? Although, I think the journal also said that originally the land had been one big island. Which then sank, and as it sank... Uh... You know, most of the humans died. <laughs> There we go. Second floor. Let's just go ahead and explore a little bit, and then we'll call it after just sort of looking around. Because I gotta say, I... I'm curious to hear from, from, from those of you who have played Myst before. I am stoked about this game. I am stoked about everything to do with this game, including the fact that A, it looks amazing, and B... Uh, you know, I just love the idea of walking around these worlds. I I was so enamored with Myst and its sequels. I just, I loved everything about it. I loved the idea of it. I love... Okay. Knives. Look at that in a second. Ooh, red page. Okay. I can't remember which one is Cirrus and uh, which one is Akinar, but, you know. 
Vault Access Island of Mist. Very plain view on Mist, and uh, so obviously there's a second half, but let's see. An axis can be if the simple first locate switches on the island, if these switches to the, go to the dock, and the marker switch off position. All right, so something to do. Hold on, let me just. I know I don't want to take photos in this game, but uh, I can copy it. But it's easier to just do this real quick. Also. <laughs> um, but hold on. Sorry, I'm just writing this down. Okay. Um, so, okay, so there's something to do with the marker switches that we're going to have to try. A lot of booze and cheese. And this cheese is surprisingly good looking for how old I'm assuming everything is. Okay, so that's one. Let's just keep it going. So it doesn't look like there's a whole lot up here on the second floor, but we might as well take a look. So there's still a blue page. <laughs> Sure. Um, I will say, I remember in the original game, obviously, they didn't have the kind of 3D modeling that they have now. Uh, okay. Uh, so the, you know, all the, the characters were just FMVs. They were humans. So, and if you remember, uh, when we played Abduction... That's not ominous. Uh, when we played Abduction, there were, like, all the people were basically videos. They were FMVs of, of actual live actors. Well, first of all... Alright, so that's the red and blue. What is this? anything important in my <laughs> remember he is preparing take only one page ominous I am guessing that whatever is like whatever you s select here gets played out there and Given what is in this cabin, I'm guessing that this is some sacrificial chamber and the bars on the doors make it really... I hope I... Yeah, there we go. Um, feels like that's a sacrificial... Like, maybe people would go in and sacrifice... Well, offer things to the gods, quote-unquote, but really it's to... Uh, okay, the door thing. It's gonna keep tripping me up. I'm sorry, guys. Um, to Cirrus and Akinar, right? Okay. Alright, so we've got the red page, the blue page, and we have the note. Okay? So, let's just, I apologize again. Everybody's gonna get super dizzy as I go down. Okay, there we go. And we'll just flip the switches back. 
But ultimately, we're just gonna, I think we're going to call it here. I mean, you guys know sort of the process here. You just redirect the water back to the quote-unquote new elevator, right? Not this one, the other one right here. And then we walk around to the dynamo. Uh, and we walk around and we take the book back to Mist. Uh, next time, when we come back, we will put the red and blue pages into the books and see if we can get some more of the messages from uh, the two brothers. And we will continue. We'll go to the next age. I can't remember which one is the next on the list, uh, on the bookshelf. I think it's the, the stone ship, right? So we're just going to have to uh, solve the, the, the sunken pirate ship. And we'll go from there. All right, so if you guys enjoy, I mean, I mean I'm going to go back to this right now. But if you guys enjoyed it, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know I'm doing something right. Let me know that you guys want to see more of this stuff. If you have, no, come here. If you have thoughts, uh, or if you uh, think that I missed something, you think I can be doing something better, by all means, leave a comment. And in any case, I'll see you all next time. Better